Which Starlink dish should you choose for your RVing or boating travels? There are three options. Mini, standard, and flat high performance. Pick wisely. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Cherie. And I'm Chris. And we are the founders of the Mobile Internet Resource Center, where we are focused on helping our RVing and boating community select their right mobile internet option. And of course, Starlink is a popular selection for our audience and what a lot of us use to keep online in our travels. Now, this video is part of a three-part series. The first video went over what Starlink is, the pros and cons. The second video went over the data plan choices, and this video will be going over the three different current equipment choices. This information can change all the time, so make sure you are watching the current version of this video to get the most up-to-date information. Okay, now the, we're going to cover the Starlink options from small to large and explain the differences in the hardware and the trade-offs and why you might want to consider one versus the other. Now, all of the Starlink options basically are sold as kits. They come with the cables you need, um, the power supply, and oftentimes they come with either a built-in router or a separate router that is something that you would install inside your boat or RV that talks to the Starlink dish that is best installed outside. Now, starting at the smallest size of Starlink is the Starlink Mini. This is the, the newest Starlink option, and it is actually a very, very popular and great option for RVers and cruisers, and also people who are traveling even more minimalist in backpacks, because this Starlink system is basically the size of a laptop. You can carry it around with you, and it is an all-in-one unit. It actually has the Wi-Fi router built right into the little flat Starlink mini dish. So very compact, integrated hardware, and it still has some really great performance. Now this Starlink mini currently costs $599 in the USA. Internationally, it's actually sold much, much cheaper than that. So maybe at some point they'll bring the price down in the USA as well. But $599, so it's more expensive than the Starlink standard. We'll get to us in a second. And the advantages the Mini has is not only is it physically smaller, it actually uses a lot less power than the Starlink standard. The SpaceX claims it averages between 25 and 40 watts of power usage. And in our testing, we've definitely seen that it can be very, very power efficient. It is a great option for people who are on a power budget. And you can also power it with DC power. Um, you know, with a, just a few caveats, uh, but you can power it off of DC much easier than other Starlink systems. So no need for AC or an inverter. Um, the Starlink does have a 110 degree field of view. So it's, does, it's designed to be permanently mounted someplace or carried around and just flip up its little kickstand leg and set it up wherever you are at to get connected. And um, well, it is just a really great portable option. Now, the one big downside, though, is the integrated Wi-Fi router is only a Wi-Fi 5 router, and it does not perform very well at all, particularly if you are not sitting right next to the router. So if you want your Starlink up on the roof or out uh, away at the end of a cable under the uh, away from trees, you're going to have very poor Wi-Fi performance where you might want to be connecting your devices. But there's also an Ethernet port on the bottom of the Starlink Mini, and we've tested, and it runs so much better to bypass the Starlink Mini's built-in Wi-Fi router and use a real, more capular router, perhaps a router that is also bonding in cellular, and then you'll get much, much better performance out of the Starlink Mini using the Ethernet port rather than the Wi-Fi port. So that's the Starlink Mini, the smallest option. Now, the next largest option is called the Standard, and uh, this dish is on its third generation since it was initially launched by Starlink. It is more than double the size of the mini dish, dimensions of around 23 inches by 15 inches. Uh, it is also weighs in over six pounds, so it is substantially larger than the mini dish. It is a standard size. And this dish also burns a lot more power than the mini dish. So it, Starlink estimates between 75 and 100 watts of power. In our testing, it's more about 50, 55 watts. So about double that of the mini dish. So that is a consideration for those that are trying to do off-grid operations. The standard dish also has the 110 degree field of view. So it's very similar to the mini dish and it's router is external. It's not built in. It is a Wi-Fi 6 router. And of course, you can bypass that and go into other routers as well. So the standard dish, however, is priced at $349. You would think, bigger dish. 
more cost. It's actually cheaper than the mini. So that's what makes the standard dish sometimes more appealing for folks is there's less entry costs to get into the Starlink ecosystem uh, to get the standard dish, but you will have more power draw and you'll need to have more installation room or carry something larger around with you than the mini dish. But then there's the bigger dish. Yes. Yeah. So go moving up each, each dish is theoretically increases its performance. So the, the, the standard has more performance than the mini. And then the highest performance Starlink dish is the flat high performance. Now this one's been out for a while and it is physically very huge. You're definitely not carrying this one around with you. It's designed basically for permanent mounting. It's not very easy to move around and set up. And this one is expensive. It costs $2,500 and it uses a lot more power. You know, SpaceX's uh, specs for this say it uses between 110 and 150 watts of power. In our testing, we've definitely seen some serious power consumptions from the Starlink flat high performance. Um, but what do you get for this uh, out of this? The one big advantage it has, this bigger physical dish, has a 140 degree field of view of the sky. So a much wider view of the sky so it can track more satellites over a bigger distance. So it can do a better job of mapping and avoiding obstructions and it theoretically can keep up with higher performance demands, particularly if you've got long continuous uploads. It can handle better extremes of heat and cold and everything else. But if this dish is basically kind of think of it as enterprise only, that $2,500 price is so much more than the, the standard or the mini, and you don't really get a huge lot of benefit for it. They don't even include a router with this anymore. They just assume you're going to use a, a more expensive and more capable enterprise level router of your own. So unless you're outfitting a cruise ship or a, a uh, Rockstar tour bus, we don't really consider the Starlink flat high performance a very viable option for our audience anymore. And neither does Starlink. They <laughs> pretty much don't even offer it on the consumer level plans at this point anymore. So for our audience, we advise looking at the mini versus the standard to start with. Only go with flat high performance if you know you just need the absolute best or you aren't living on a budget. <laughs> we did do a video recently with our Starlink guru. Um, he took the mini and the standard out in the field, did some head-to-head -head comparisons. That video is available in our uh, live series where you can go and get some real world hands-on experience between the two dishes if that helps you make a decision. Yeah. But those are both two great decisions. If you're going with Starlink, the standard, or the mini are good options. Um, only a few considerations to weigh between them. There's also still a lot of the older version of the standard, which has actually ended up being called the standard actuated. It's the version of a Starlink on a stick that had little aiming motors in it. That is now depreciated by Starlink, is no longer being sold, but there's a lot of them out there in the used market. It will perform okay, but in general, you're better off going with the, the new version of the standard or the mini um, if you're diving into the Starlink ecosystem now. So that's the hardware. So if you have other questions about Starlink, do view this whole entire video series. The first video went over the pros and cons of Starlink. The second one went over the data plans. And then of course this one is on the equipment. We also have a full guide to Starlink that is completely free and public over at rvmobileinternet.com slash Starlink that goes into even more information and is con constantly kept up to date because I can pretty much guarantee you as soon as I get all these videos produced and uploaded, <laughs> Starlink will change that, something. That is the one constant with SpaceX <laughs> and Starlink is everything is subject to change but usually things just keep getting better the coverage keeps getting better the performance keeps getting better and Starlink is a great addition to most mobile tech arsenals particularly when you combine best of both worlds combine that Starlink with cellular and you'll be doing really good and we cannot thank our premium members over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center enough they are the ones who fund us being able to track all of these constant Starlink changes and bring this content to you um, if mobile internet is an important part of your lifestyle please do consider becoming a member. Help us continue our mission and go further with our content, especially if you're wanting to integrate in other options than just Starlink as your only option. So until next time, the next update to this video, <laughs> the bandwidth be with you. Keep connected. See you out there. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.